Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, February 18th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV, live at five. We have an awesome show for you, Seven Reasons Real Estate Agents Buy Virtual Tours, and here to speak about that is Brandon Doyle. Hey guys, Brandon, how's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for being on the show. Brandon is a realtor. Uh, uh, Brandon is the team leader at Doyle Real Estate Team with Remax Results in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Brandon is a frequent contributor to Inman and an early adopter of virtual tours uh, and is also co-author of Mindset Methods and Metrics and author of Real Estate Marketing Playbook and Success rate marketing. Uh, uh, Brandon, you sound like you've been very busy. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of things going on. So uh, certainly a um, big adopter of technology, as you can see behind me here, I've got a lot of smart home tech. Uh, before that, you know, it was digital showings and uh, doing drones and all that. So I, I try to keep on top of the trends. Yes. And, and in fact, I, I know you're such an early adopter because I started the We Get Around Network Forum in August 2014, and you joined the forum uh, that month. So you, you've <laughs> been you've been involved with virtual tours, uh, uh, certainly at least going back to 2014 when when we, we first met through the through the forum. Um, Brandon, today's question for real estate photographers that offer virtual tours or are thinking about offering virtual tours, why do real estate agents buy virtual tours? Yeah, it's a very loaded question. You know, and there's a lot of different reasons why real estate agents are buying virtual tours. And you know, at this point, we've got COVID going on. Uh, so that's going to be a big driver. Uh, but if we think way back to when virtual tours first came about, it was really a point of differentiation. And so they're great for marketing yourself. Um, you know, you can use it to showcase properties. Uh, but at the heart of things, it's that you know our first showings are done online, and that's where consumers are going uh, to check on a property. Uh, so having a really good, a strong digital footprint is very important to uh, maximizing your marketing efforts. Uh, st statistically, homes with digital showings do sell for more and sell faster, which is great. But then also now as an agent that's you know been doing this for years, we have a catalog of, of properties that we've uh, marketed in the past and we can use those as examples when we go in for uh, listing presentations uh, so that the homeowners can say, oh, wow, yeah, I've seen that. That's, that's like that Google Street View for the inside of your house. That's awesome. Uh, we want that, so. Well, uh, there was a lot in that sentence. So how, how about we, break it down and go a little bit slower. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to be naive here and just say, well, why does COVID matter? That was the first thing that you mentioned. Yep. And so right now here in Minnesota, at least we have an issue where uh, we have very limited inventory, which I'm sure is true across the US, if not the world. Uh, so the demand for the houses is huge. And as we list them, what we're running into is that there's more people trying to book showings then there are time slots available. And so we're trying to do the social distancing. Uh, we're trying to not have overlapping showings, uh, but we're running into scheduling issues. And so uh, by having a digital showing that has something, uh, the 3D walkthrough or like a floor plan, uh, buyers are able to better visualize what the property is gonna be like ahead of time. And that way, you know, they can either get more excited about the property and they're pretty much sold before they would get there. Or if there's a deal breaker, uh, they're going to identify that right away and you're saving everyone time. So the buyers aren't uh, taking time to go look at a property that's not going to work for them. And then the sellers don't need to worry about uh, leaving their house. And so, um, and then for those that are very concerned right now uh, that may be more risk, uh, this is a very safe way to tour a house um, and, and see if it's something that might be a good fit. So we're seeing, we've actually are seeing offers sight unseen that are just been looking at the tours so it's been a very great tool uh, for that. And is sight unseen, is that because people live, live outside the area? 
and that's the only way for them to see the house or they actually nope. live in town? They live in town, but uh, just due to how quickly houses are selling or their schedule, or just maybe um, they're risk averse in that they you know, don't want those overlapping showings, uh, we're seeing that people are going that route. Uh, it's actually not too uncommon now, so. Do you have an estimate of what percentage of, of your listings are sight unseen offers? Uh, so last weekend we listed a house and we had, I think, seven offers and two of them had never been in the house. So we went with one of the offers that had, had been in it, but uh, for other reasons. But it was interesting to see that there was there were people writing offers who had never actually uh, seen it in person. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, earlier in the show, you, you mentioned uh, virtual tours as a differentiator. I think you were talking about when you first got started uh, with virtual tours. Is that still true today? Uh, do you find that virtual tours helps differentiate your real estate brokerage? Yeah, you know, when we started, I was actually the first agent in the state uh, to ever have a Matterport camera. Uh, later on, we went and we started just outsourcing that just because I believe in the, the benefit of a professional uh, and then, you know, respecting my time as well. Uh, but yes, I, I would say that it's still a point of differentiation. Uh, it's something that's noteworthy when uh, sellers talk about it and they share the home you know, with their audience on Facebook. A lot of times it's the first time someone's ever seen something like this and they're often blown away. And so that really just kind of sets the marketing bar uh, for us and you know, positions us as a market leader in the space and has for uh, several years now. I think it's 2000. 21 and we started, I think, 2013, 14, uh, using the technology. So we've, we've almost eight years now. So in, in terms of differentiation today, uh, are you going on listing presentations where there is more than one agent pitching to the homeowner? Yeah, a lot of times uh, we're in competition. And so it's nice to be able to compete based off of like performance and uh, you know, you know, what, what you offer as far as marketing instead of defaulting back to you know, price or commission. Uh, so we can come in and even if we're not the lowest price as far as commission goes, we, we often still do get the business just based on our track record and the technology that we utilize. And so uh, we bring an iPad with and we just let them navigate on their own. A lot, a lot of times people have already been on our website and they've seen that or they've uh, seen our marketing elsewhere and they think it's really cool. It, I've had several people say that that's uh, part of the reason that they, they contacted us over other agents. Uh, so a uh, great tool. We use it for all of our listings, no matter what the price point is, because that, that is an objection I hear for some agents. Uh, agents are notoriously cheap. Uh, and so what I'll hear is that, oh, I'll use that on my next million dollar listing or in my next whatever, or I'll use that if it doesn't sell. Uh, but our stance is to put our best foot forward every time and do great marketing. And, you know, just having that out the gate uh, it does wonders for our, our sellers, it attracts multiple offers. And we utilize that coming soon period. Uh, I think that really helps as well, just because you've got such great marketing material out there where people are able to virtually uh, navigate the space and it gets them excited. And then once they see it in person, uh, they're ready to write an offer without mm -hmm. having to go back. Uh, you know, I asked you about differentiation and, and I think I heard two interesting things as a result of that. Uh, uh, I was thinking, oh, okay, you're using it to differentiate when you go on a listing presentation. Um, but I also heard that you're getting inbound leads as a result of, and it sounds like that's as a result of using virtual tours on every listing. Yeah, 100% is a result of that. Uh, so, you know, once you have this listing and you put it out on the on MLS, it goes out to all the different websites, all the other brokers' websites, uh, all the portals, and people see that and they're smart enough to figure out, you know, who the listing agent is. Uh, so when it comes time to sell their property, they want to work with someone that's using all those tools. So uh, we've definitely got an additional business from that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I've experienced exactly what you've said about, oh, we'll use it on our next million dollar listing. 
just uh, yesterday, Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, uh, the uh, REMAX uh, reported that USA median house sale prices uh, are $285,000. That's up about 12% from a year ago. Is uh, I, I'm hearing that you use virtual tours on every listing regarding a, regardless of price point, but is $285,000, is, is that a, enough of a price point in order to justify the agent doing photos, virtual tour, maybe other things like floor plans or video? Oh, certainly. So I've actually used it on a condo once. It was sixty-six thousand. Uh, so price is irrelevant. It's about the impact that we're making on that person because they're going to share that with their friends, and then, and then they see like, oh wow, Brandon spent that much effort, you know, marketing this property. What can he do for us? Um, so just having that consistent level uh, of service across the board. You know, it would be weird if we had like we treated one customer differently. Like, oh, well, you're not worthy of our, our marketing package, so we're going to cheap out here. It doesn't work like that. It's the same, same experience every time, um, which helps with the repeat and referral business. Uh, but it also makes it easy to streamline the process because this is our standard, so this is just what we know to do. Like, my assistant knows that you know, once we get that listing contract, we're going to get our stager out there, and then we're going to get the photographer out there uh, that we're hiring every time no matter what. And we know it's a two-day turnaround. Uh, so we build that in and that way we have all the assets ready to go on Thursday or Friday, depending um, when we want to go live and we'll have that uh, ready to go. So yeah, we've really just standardized it. Uh, I would imagine for, help me out, it was a listing for how much? 60? Uh, 66,000 was the lowest we've done. Yeah, 66,000. I, I have to imagine for a listing for 66,000 that you may not have generated sufficient fees to cover all the things you did for that property. I don't know, I think we still worked out just fine. Uh, so typical commission you know, around here is about 6%. Um, the listing agent keeps half. So even at that price point or the average price point, if you look at like the, what the median is, uh, it, it's still worthwhile. And to be honest, like at this point, the internet is doing a lot of the heavy lifting as far as the listings go. Uh, so just having that professional marketing, uh, maybe utilizing a stager if necessary, pricing accordingly, uh, that's where all of our service comes in. Um, and then once it goes online, I mean, that's where all the marketing magic is happening. It's getting syndicated out to all these websites and I'm not paying anything extra for that. And, you know, if you look, 20 years ago, I would be taking out ads in the newspaper and I'd be going out and putting up open house signs and sitting out there. Well, now I've got a 24 seven open house uh, advertising every possible channel for free. <laughs> so, we're, I mean, it's easy to justify the cost there because that's where that actually moves the needle. Whereas a lot of this other stuff that people try to do it has very little effect. It's mostly just uh, ego driven. Now, if you look at a lot of agents' ads, they're just about them and not about their properties or what they can do for you. It's like we're number one and stuff. So I just choose to spend my money uh, on the properties. And I think that's a good reflection of our brand and it helps us win more business. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, there's so many things that just came out of what you're describing. So I, how important is the choice of using, I, I keep talking about virtual tours, but I understand you, you do a lot of digital marketing and virtual tours is, is a subset of that. Mm -hmm. But how much of this marketing is about selling the house or getting the listing? Yeah, you know, it's a pretty even split. Our job as agents is to, uh, to market the property the best we can. And that's, I mean, that's what we're being hired for. Uh, but one of the side benefits is, of course, that that marketing uh, helps market us. <laughs> uh, and that's the other half of our business. You know, we spend about half of our time finding business and the other half of the time actually working on the business. Um, so it's nice that when you have listings, because listings help generate more business, whereas with buyers, you know, you don't, you can't advertise that you have a buyer. So buyers don't generate more buyers typically, but listings certainly generate uh, buyer leads for sure. Uh, which is really easy to do, you know, with a sign writer, 
text this uh, code and get the 3D tour. Uh, those have been really uh, successful for us. But then also, of course, uh, more listings, just because typically when one house sells, uh, you see more in that same neighborhood, kind of that popcorn effect. And then it's just kind of an online digital resume. Uh, so right now we've probably got 200, I'd say, at least tours that we've done over the years uh, that just are, exist out there. And, you know, that's kind of our portfolio. Mm -hmm. So do, do you find that, uh, so I'm, I'm hearing when the listing presentation, which, which may be they're already pre-sold because they've contacted you and they see the marketing that you're doing. And then second, that you're actually, when you do a presentation, you're bringing the iPad out, showing them the, the tour, let them uh, experience it firsthand. <clears throat> do, have you found over time that you're getting bigger listings? You're trading yeah. in the ecosystem? Yeah, definitely our average price point over the years has gone up. And part of that is, of course, just appreciation naturally. Uh, but we have landed much larger homes. Uh, we're starting to list homes in the million dollar range, which in our market is is certainly luxury. Um, our average price point here is probably 300,000. Uh, we're in a metro of Minneapolis, a suburb. So the, the home prices here are pretty good in general, but uh, anytime you get above like 700 million, that's certainly considered luxury. And we're getting a lot more of those opportunities lately. And it's, it's a combination of the uh, digital showings and the, all that we offer there, the aerial photography, all that comes together. But then also just having that history of having sold them. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, how do I break into the luxury market? And <laughs> until you either have a friend that trusts you enough and to give you that opportunity, or you have the experience that you've worked on those properties in the past, um, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, but once you're there, it's very easy to stay there because it's just kind of self-perpetuating. Very similar to like Google results. Yeah, do, do you have any sense of how important the virtual tours have been in terms of trading up to those 700,000 to million dollar listings? Yeah, I mean, there isn't a, a list, a million dollar listing in our market that doesn't have a 360 showing or a 360 tour on it at this point. And if they don't, it's because of privacy reasons. Uh, so it's kind of like the standard. It's a hoop that you would have had to have jumped through at some point. So and if you, you get those agents that say, once I get that listing, then I will do that. But it doesn't work because the seller will have expected you to be doing that already. Yeah, so you need to have examples in your portfolio mm -hmm. to prove that you've done this and are familiar with the, the process. So if the agent says, uh, as you said earlier, I'll do the virtual tour when I get the million dollar listing, uh, what's, what's broken about that from your perspective? Yeah, so you can't really prove to the seller that you know what you're doing because you don't have any examples you know you kind of have to have that track record and so working your way up um, and, and it starts with just your everyday listing so uh, that's why i think it's important to just do it for every listing period make it a part of your process especially if you have a really good partner uh, in your your area like for us we have one company in particular that's very reliable that's they're our go-to um, and when they're not available i have a list of other providers in our area that I'll, I'll reach out to and see. Um, but we know that we're getting that same level of service uh, and we trust them. Uh, so that it's been a great relationship. Uh, I'm going to ask you more about that later in the show. I wanted to get into the a couple of statistics that you, you had mentioned right off the bat uh, about uh, virtual tours uh, uh, um, helping sell a listing for a higher price and helping sell a listing, uh, I want to say faster. And I, 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 I did make a note uh, uh, from the um, Matterport uh, website. Uh, uh, it has a couple interesting statistics. Uh, listings with a 3D tour sell for more money. 97% of listings um, get 
uh, the list closer to the list price than 93%, which kind of translates to up to 9% higher sales price. So I want to kind of break this down for, on this first statistic up to 9% higher sales price. Um, ha has your experience been virtual tours and your digital marketing have helped contribute to the home seller getting more money for their home? Yeah, so about five years ago, we statistically proved that in our own marketplace by uh, pulling the entire database from the MLS and comparing. <laughs> it was quite the task. Um, I haven't gone through that process uh, since then, but at the time, it was a very similar number. Uh, and, you know, the part of that, too, is that um, the nicer listings tend to get better marketing. Uh, so... Um, but at the same time, they definitely were selling faster. And right now, I mean, in our market, if it doesn't sell in the first weekend, people start to ask what's wrong with it. Uh, but five years ago, uh, there was a longer average sales uh, cycle. It was probably closer to 60. And we were seeing properties that had digital showings of any sort were selling closer to like 30. So you're cutting that time in half, which is uh, certainly a huge value for your client. And you think about, uh, even holding cost alone. Uh, so there's, there's really a great tool things. right there. I'm hearing two statistics at once. So, and, and, and maybe they, they come together and they're together. Uh, one is, is home selling faster. So again, mm -hmm. uh, Matterport on, on their blog, February 25th, 2020, uh, says depending on the market, homes with a 3D tour sell up to 31% faster, meaning fewer days on market. Mm -hmm. And again, that other statistic about up to 9% higher sales price, uh, Matterport on their blog, if, as essentially quoting uh, um, uh, the research lead, Kelly Anderson, PhD candidate studying marketing at Jerry S. Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech University. Sounds like she did something similar to you, which yep. was pulling all the MLS data and saying, this is what the house listed for. This is what it sold for. And it had a tour or it didn't have a tour. Yep. And then to, to do the analysis of days on market and price sold. Does that sound like something that you actually <laughs> went through? That is exactly what we did. Uh, and yeah, our results were very similar in, in both regards. So that is so awesome more that you money. actually did that. So I, I, I'd love to challenge our listeners that, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just math. So if you have an opportunity to pull the MLS <laughs> data and look at, listings with a tour, listings without a tour, date sold, date listed, and uh, what was the listing price and how much did it actually sell for? And uh, I think that would just be a great thing to take a look at. But that said, probably getting too, too much in the weeds here, Brandon, the, even if the house sells, let's, let's, I'm gonna break it down. If the house sells for up to 9% higher sales price, as a real estate, as a realtor, how does that matter to you as it relates to photographers? I mean, if a photographer comes in to a real estate agent and says, hey, homes with, uh, with this kind of virtual tour sell for 9% higher sales price, should the realtor care? I mean, if your fiduciary duty is to your seller, you owe it to them to do everything you can to get the most amount of money. So. Uh, I would say that agents that aren't doing this are doing a disservice um, and they should just get out of the business. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's be honest, they're not keeping up with the times. They're not utilizing the tools. Uh, at, to me, it would be like if we were in the 90s and like the newspaper was the thing to do and you were looking at different brokers and you asked your broker if he was going to, he or she was going to place your listing in the newspaper or if they were going to do open houses and they just flat out said, no, they're not going to do that. Well, you wouldn't pay as much to work with that person because you're not getting the exposure. So I think it's absolutely no different. Uh, as agents, we, we're obligated to use the best tools possible uh, to get the most money for our sellers. And statistically, 3D tours, uh, virtual tours of this nature uh, achieve that goal. And so uh, hopefully at some point we'll get to a, like a a point where every agent is doing it, but unfortunately agents by nature are very cheap individuals. <laughs> so uh, we have to kind of overcome that. So uh, 
I, I guess that begs the question to, to, to say, given that the money comes out of the pocket of the agent uh, that is doing the listing or typically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, In the United States, at least. Other parts of the world doesn't work that way. Different, but uh, for the most part, most of our audience, yeah, we're in uh, 139 countries with the We Get Around Network Forum, though I would say uh, mo most of our uh, community is, is United States, Canada. Uh, so uh, maybe if I just ask you about some objections and say, okay, I am a real estate photographer. I, 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 and I don't know, I think you're gonna say yes on ev everything, but I'm trying to understand <laughs> You know how uh, how to overcome objections. I yep. mean, obje objections are a community here that the house will sell anyway. Yeah, so that's the biggest one uh, that I see it right now, especially because well, let's be honest, you can throw some cell phone photos out there as long as you're reasonably close on price, you're going to sell it. Are you going to get the most amount of money uh, possible? Absolutely not. Uh, so you're doing a disservice to your client and yourself, obviously. Because if you get more money for the house, then you too own, I mean, we're commission-based, so you're going to make more money. Um, and also, I just go back to the point of building a portfolio. Like, are shitty cell phone camera photos, like, is that your brand? Is that your standard? If so, okay, but like, realize that. And when the market shifts, now that is your brand and no one's going to hire you uh, versus someone that's using professional marketing professional photography, uh, 3D tours, et cetera, uh, that, that really sets a standard and people see that, you know, we have a digital resume. Every time we sell a house that goes on the internet and everyone sees it. So everyone knows you either, you know, marketed it professionally or you cheaped out. <laughs> and I sure as heck don't want to be known as the guy that cheaped out. Do, do, do the math for me, uh, I, because I, I'm stuck on the following. Because if I, if, I, if I tell someone to say the house will sell anyway, you know, if, uh, um, or, or, or maybe the case is the house is going to sell for more. I think that's what you mentioned. The house mm -hmm. will sell for more. Uh, and, and, and we just assume that mo what motivates a real estate agent, maybe not fair, but is to say money. Uh, so... Uh, you know, what's the uh, incremental additional money, you know, if the house, I, I'm going to go back to my statistics for a sec. So the house sells for 9% higher sales price. So help me do the math. Yeah, the you, house, would, you would make about $1,000 more as an agent. Okay, so uh, thank you. you so you, it, would, it would pay for itself. It would pay right. for itself and in most cases, plus some probably. And you would have that digital resume and you'd be netting your sellers more money. Uh, so really it's a no brainer. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to, uh, for our real estate photographers, just say realtor Brandon Doyle says no brain, uh, no brainer sign here. <laughs> so, uh, it, but is, is the incremental difference that eventually falls to the real estate agent. I mean, you know, let's say the house lists for 300,000 and it doesn't sell for anymore. So if you buy a virtual tour from the photographer, it's actually costing you money. You're not, you're not making any more, you're, it's costing you more. So I, I yeah. think that's the essence of the house will sell anyway. Why should I do, why should I spend a penny more on marketing or on yeah. physical? Specifically because virtual you're not virtual. only marketing the property, you're marketing yourself and you're missing out on future opportunities. Uh, so the future opportunity of that neighbor that you might have got a listing from is much higher. So, you know, that's another uh, another commission right there. Yeah, right now, our average commission here is about 10,000 per, per sale. You know, so to say 10% of that goes towards marketing the property. I mean, that's like peanuts. <laughs> You know, that is your job is to market the property. Uh, so you should have a reasonable amount of money set aside to do so. And uh, there's no better way than with professional photography and tours. Because, uh, you know, the, the internet, again, is doing the heavy lifting and syndicating it out to all the websites for you. And so you know, you're getting your name and, and the property out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too expensive. Yeah, compared to though. <laughs> so we've got to look, go back to the opportunity cost. You know, sure, it's more than 
taking the photos yourself, but uh, you're almost like losing money by doing that because now you're not going to get get that next sale. So I would argue it's too expensive not to do this. You know, I wouldn't tarnish my brand by having shitty photos out there uh, because then that's going to affect my ability to get future business. Uh, so yeah, for me, I can't afford not to use uh, digital showings for every listing, no matter what. And if my guy is not available, then I'm going to find somebody else that has, you know, the same offering or similar, close enough, at least. <laughs> it, it's a relationship business. Mm -hmm. I don't need a tour. I, it's to get the listing. I know the people. Mm -hmm. So why, why I, I've, I've spent my lifetime going to Rotary <clears throat> and luncheons and social events and I know people and they know me and they know I'm a real estate agent and when they're ready to sell their house they'll come to me so it's a relationship business why should I be spending any extra money on virtual tours yeah certainly so I'm a young guy and uh, I've obviously adopted the technology but a lot of the business I get is uh, other people or other agents feel they're entitled to. Uh, you're never entitled to any business. There's always somebody that's willing to work harder and do things differently. Uh, so I think it's quite foolish when agents assume that they're gonna get business, whether it's family or friends or somebody they met in Rotary. Uh, you do need to build those relationships, but you do also need to use the best tools possible. Otherwise, when you know they interview you versus another agent, that agent might have a point of differentiation and might be enough to uh, steal that business away, if you will. Uh, so by all means, they, they, they should adopt the technology and, and start using it. And you know, if it, if it works really well, uh, that person's gonna say, wow, look at this awesome stuff that my agent did and, and share it with more people versus, oh, my agent did just kind of what I expected. There's no wow factor there. And there's no real reason to talk about it the next day at the water cooler. I, I imagine you're doing both branded and unbranded. So you have the unbranded for your MLS, but you have a branded version you're sharing with your, your client, perhaps other agents. Do you find that the, the home seller is, is, is actually marketing you by telling, by sh sharing your digital assets with others? Yep. So what we do is when we get the, showing back, we'll share it with a seller and say, you know, is there anything in here that you want us to change or, or get some feedback? Because it could be that we might have included something in there that they weren't proud of. Uh, maybe they feel that a certain room is dirty or something. And that gives us an opportunity to fix it if necessary, but also gets them excited about the marketing. And oftentimes they're going to end up sharing that uh, tour before it ever even goes live, which I can't do because like, depending on how it is marketed, I may not be able to publicly market it ahead of time, but they certainly can. And if it has my name attached to it, that's great. Uh, so yeah, we do both. And obviously through social media and stuff, we'll use our branded version. And then through the MLS, we use the unbranded. But even on the unbranded version, people are linking it back to us because your average consumer is smart enough to figure out who the listing agent is. Uh, so they know, even if like the other websites trying to hide it, they'll figure it out. I already got the listing. Why should I spend the money on a virtual tour? Yeah, just for all the same reasons we've uh, discussed, you know, your fiduciary duty is to the seller. You need to get them the most money possible and you want to use the best tools mm -hmm. to do that. And then that in turn helps market you, which will give you more opportunities going forward. Now, as a photographer, I, I think I might sound a bit threatening if I, if I came in and, and said, hey, it's your fiduciary responsibility to use virtual tours because they will help uh, uh, increase uh, the sales price on average by 9% and, uh, and, and sell the house 31% faster. So you're either doing this or I'm taking you to jail. I mean, it sounds a <laughs> bit threatening to kind of- Yeah, I mean, if you just word it as such and say, wouldn't you want to, or if you were- you know, looking up for the best interest of your client. You just got to spin it in a nice, softer way. Sometimes I come off harsh, but I'm the kind of guy that's just going to do it, uh, do it for all of my listings. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the numbers don't lie. It's not like the stats are made up. They pulled from the MLS. It's all public data. It's just a fact. <laughs> and you either are going to do that and, uh, you know, your seller is going to get the benefit or you're not. <laughs> And uh, 
as we go forward and we see more adoption, it's really going to be a standout of which agents do and don't. And, and I, I saw it, it started to really become noticeable about four years ago, I would say, uh, where there was a divide where I was like, okay, these agents have adopted the technology. They're the ones that are getting listings. And these guys over here, yeah, they're still getting a couple listings, their family and friends, but they're not out there winning business left and right, like the rest of them are. And you start to see that shift in like what percentage of their business is listings versus buyers. Um, if you, like, there's a lot of books out there for real estate. Um, listings are the way to go. They take up less time. Uh, you can have multiple listings at the same time. Whereas with buyers, you can only have so many buyers because you can't be in two places at once. Whereas with listings, you can have, have them out there. They're always advertising for you. Uh, so like right now, listings are gold. Uh, and you want to use any tool you can to get those listings. Uh, I want potential buyers to see the house in person. Yeah, I would argue that they're still going to. But what the tour helps with is um, upfront beforehand to get them excited about the property. Also to eliminate ones that uh, might be a complete waste of time. And then the biggest area I see the tour being a benefit for buyers is that second look. Uh, so instead of having the seller um, leave the house and have the parents come in and look at the property a second time or the buyers come back and try to get off the fence, uh, they can digitally go and they can share that with as many friends as they want and get their opinion. And so we found a lot of times that that's been very helpful. And then they, they just, they're more excited about it as well because they can click around and say, oh, well, this is where I'm gonna put my TV and this is what I'm gonna do with that. And they've got the little printout of the floor plan so they can draw on it. And I, I've seen all sorts of stuff like that. And we've even had requests where people uh, wanted to get back in the property for some reason. And I would just direct them to the digital tour and they, say, oh, okay, <laughs> that's all I needed. Uh, they didn't necessarily need to get into the property. So uh, that's do worked they, out really well. Do they go back to do measurements? Uh, is it to see, to think about, will their furniture fit? Is, are there? Yeah, a lot of it's, you know, just measurements, colors, things like that. Uh, the, just, the tours just, saved you from having to, to go yep, so let people in. Yeah, for time. things like that, because they can just do it themselves and and the other big factor was that, that, you know, family or friend approval. So, or if you're in, but if you've looked at a lot of different houses at the end of the day, sometimes they kind of all run together, you know, look at 10 houses in a row. It's like, no, no, that was the, the house on main street. No, no, that was the one with uh, the weird kitchen with the showing when you can just click back and be like, ah, jog your memory. That's the house I was thinking of. Uh, so in that way, it's, it's a nice resource as well. So. You, you mentioned that I think at least on one occasion, you had a home seller have concerns about privacy, mm -hmm. perhaps security. Could you talk about that? And, and, and did you overcome that objection or did you accept that? Yeah, I mean, it's a legitimate concern. Uh, with a 3D tour, you can literally walk through the house uh, and see what's there and what's not, uh, how you could get in and out. Uh, and so we respect that. Um, in those instances, we can um, either eliminate the ability to jump from room to room. Uh, so having the same 3D tour, but not necessarily giving people the layout. Uh, another option is to just like, uh, like remove certain uh, spheres from the, the pre presentation completely, remove certain photos, um, use tour like a editing service to remove certain objects if necessary, like if there happens to be like a painting that's uh, very valuable, you can um, just remove that digitally. There's a lot of things that we can do to overcome that. But uh, for the people that are super, super concerned, um, they just respect their, their opinion <laughs> and, uh, and and don't do it, which is fine. I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, I, I think par part of what I heard was I, I, I want people to come into the house fewer times, but I, I would say a number of our WGA and community members have talked about that the agents really wanted to have the touch points, the interaction, because, uh, oh, that might be somebody who, who they, they came in to see the house with me. They didn't have an agent. Now they need an agent. 
boom, I, I converted a lead to, uh, to actually helping someone uh, buy a home. So yeah. did, are you finding that you're, you've reduced the number of, of touch points? And now we've actually increased it. <laughs> and the way we're doing that is through our sign writer. Uh, so we have on the sign writer, it just says text this number. It says text 3D or 360 or something like that to this number to get the tour. And it's less uh, intrusive. You know, so if you're driving by and you want information about the house and instead of just like going to Zillow, uh, what they can do is text that number and they don't feel as threatened as if they were to pick up the phone and call you. Uh, but now you have their phone number and uh, it'll actually start engaging with them automatically. Uh, so the way I have it set up is people can text and then if they text 3D, um, it'll reply back and ask for the house number. That way we don't have to create multiple different signs. We just have one sign and then I just program it in the back end. Uh, so it'll say 3D and then, or they text 3D, then it asks them about what the house number is. They put the house number in, it, it kicks back the tour. Uh, it delays a little bit. And after a while, it'll ask them if they have any more questions, uh, suggest that they call. And if they don't reply, uh, then we can have it set up so that they can say, did you wanna see the house in person? And link directly to like my Calendly account and that way they can pick a time and I know that I'm available, uh, put in the request. Um, but you could also drip additional information, marketing materials, uh, disclosure statements, things like that to them just automatically uh, in a much less threatening format uh, via text. And we found that those people are very responsive. Uh, so we've gotten additional sales uh, where we've actually gotten both ends of the deal uh, because we were just able to follow up with the person directly instead of them you know, calling uh, their agent or going on some other website and uh, being turned into a lead for someone else. They're our lead at no cost to us. It's just a matter of following up. So uh, mm -hmm. that's worked out really well for us. Mm -hmm. And they're that's usually awesome. really impressed with the tool. So, Yes. And, and, and so I, I, I believe I'm hearing that there's two things happening there. One is the, the automation of the dialogue, the chat bot via text. Mm -hmm. uh, but I suspect that people are, are now texting in and you see that they've actually texted a real question that you want to respond to. So you have the benefit of both the automation and uh, re responding personally when it warrants. Yeah, so the company is actually called Call Action. Uh, there was a guy that runs it just absolutely brilliant. Uh, but this was an idea he came up with, and then uh, people in the mastermind group kind of tweaked it a little bit. Um, kind of, he had the link to the rider, which is actually just like supercheapscience.com. Uh, so my total investment was probably like forty dollars in this whole thing, and then the time to set it up. So very, very minimal. You have his and website. The triggers are just uh, keywords. So like the setting that house number up is a keyword is what's triggering the response. And if they ever say showing, then it, it triggers a different thing. And, and then I see that too. So I, I know that if it's important, I can just call them right away. You have the website offhand? Yeah, callaction.co. Callaction.co, okay, good. I'm glad I asked for that. Uh, uh, cool, so uh, you've actually used technology to increase touch points in a non-threatening way rather than perhaps uh, saying, oh, I'd, I'd rather go meet somebody in the house mm -hmm. I've never met before that may or may not be interested in that property. I'm sort of being efficient with my time. Is that kind of? Yep. You're essentially having a 24 seven open house and you're eliminating tire kickers. <laughs> so like, I don't wanna go spend every Saturday, Sunday sitting in houses. I'd rather just have the open house be there and then once the people are interested and pre-qualified themselves, uh, at that point, I'll step in and offer to show the property. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual tour is too good. Too good? Too is good. there such a thing? <laughs> yes, we actually, I, you know, I, I've heard that as well. Uh, you can see everything. Uh, now, I, I, don't know, I don't know why you can't see everything when you go see the house, but uh, <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess that objection is well, I'd rather get them in the house to, to see certain qualities that they may not have 
focused on when they looked at the virtual tour. So you, you, you've never heard that objection before. Virtual tours do good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, like you said, the people are going to see the house. So why would you hide that? You know, just put it all out there. Um, the good looks good. The bad looks bad. It, it is what it is kind of situation. The only instance where I kind of understand where the people are coming from is the privacy concerns. And in that instance, I, I recommend just removing certain shots or uh, uh, blurring things out or uh, using a digital editing service like Box Brownie or something to just remove it completely. Okay, um, boxbrownie.com. Uh, oh, yeah. Great are reducing, guys. So sellers are reducing our commission. Sellers are reducing our commission. I, I have less dollars for marketing. Yeah, so with this, it's a tool to actually charge more uh, because you're offering more. <laughs> you know, it's just another uh, feature. Uh, so when they're comparing, you know, okay, but did that agent do this, this, and that? Okay, well, that's how I can justify the commission that I'm asking. Um, but in re reality, like, there certainly is a downward uh, pressure on commissions that that's not going away anytime soon. Uh, the, the reality is that the internet is doing the heavy lifting for us um, and the demand for housing is higher than supply. Uh, so, you, you, I mean, there's a lot of other things going on there uh, that agents are overcoming. What, um, but, you know, it's just a business model. Uh, so for us, I think it, it's worth it. I can very quickly do the math. 3% uh, of whatever the average sales price is. And I know what my, you know, my actual cost is for the marketing, which is probably around $900 uh, all in for everything um, on average for a house. And, and so I can quickly say if it's worth my time or not. And in most cases it is. Uh, and so that's, it's just kind of a, a choice that people need to make. And, you know, in some cases too, if you're gonna get the listing, uh, you're also gonna get them as a buyer. And it's typically at a higher price point. And it's an opportunity to get more referrals in the future because you're adding someone to your uh, database that hopefully is a very happy client. So uh, yeah, I just go back to it's an agent's business decision and, and it's their brand. Uh, so for me, having a consistent brand that is, you know, does, is a adopter of technology, does professional marketing for all of his listings, no matter what, um, that is kind of who I am and, and what I want people to think of us. Uh, so for me, it's worth it. And uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's a very small percentage. If you think if, you're, if I'm spending $900 and I'm usually making $10,000, right there, that's already less than 10%. So that seems like a great deal. <laughs> Photographers should charge more. Yeah, perhaps. What's interesting though is uh, the pricing schemes that I'm seeing is kind of a race to the bottom, which I think is foolish. I think that the, the photographers themselves should focus more on the service that they provide and charge more money. Um, and the biggest service that you can provide is that quick turnaround. And then also uh, one thing I was thinking about last night before uh, just kind of preparing for this is that uh, photographers need that point of differentiation too. And so if you are a Matterport provider, which Matterport's a great system. I love it. That's where I got, I started with the, this whole thing. Uh, that's great, but you should market that you are doing, you know, like a, a landing, a splash page or whatever that has the photos and the tour and floor plan and some descriptions all in one, unbranded versus branded, whatever. Uh, use that as your, your piece, not the tour itself because otherwise they're gonna say well why am i paying you i could go get matterport from this guy or i could just do it myself um, and so you kind of lose that whereas if you have like this nice wrapper around it and it's very professionally looking um and then you have like a guarantee like i guarantee i have a 24-hour turnaround or i will fix things uh, that's where you get that loyalty uh, so if like for me i've got someone locally and I'll use him every time because we've built this relationship over the years and I know I can uh, count on him and I know that the photos are gonna look good and then we're gonna get in the, the amount of time that I, he said. Um, but other people I see like in, um, in the groups, they'll just say, oh, I need a Matterport pro 
I need someone to do a Matterport. Who can do the Matterport for the cheapest? And it's like, well, that's not a winning proposal. So yeah, really focusing on that differentiation there and, and the level of service to build those relationships with agents is, is huge. So if a photographer needs to offer a single property website or a property website that aggregates and nicely presents the virtual tour, photos, video, text, uh, aerial, floor plans, whatever digital assets that the photographer and the real estate agent agree on. So uh, both branded and unbranded. Correct. That, I mean, that's one side of it too. And the other side is just that uh, the service and some sort of guarantee. Guarantee and uh, service may be a little bit hard to differentiate until somebody actually engages you to know. Yeah, for your existing clients, because like they're like, with our guys, like I just know that they're smart enough to uh, put this toilet seat down and uh, just little things like that. Move things off the kitchen counter. Like uh, there, I've seen well, kind of very critical, I guess, uh, <laughs> other agent stuff where it's like your photographer wasn't smart enough to do that. Like you wouldn't just move something over. Like that's a very poorly framed shot or like who in the world wouldn't put the toilet seat down or shut the shower curtain, just little things like that, that like I know that they're gonna do, but I don't necessarily know that the, somebody else would if I just hired some guy that just has a Matterport camera. Uh, same with drones, like you know, it's very easy to purchase a drone right now, but really when you're looking at the, the photographers, you want someone that's like licensed and bonded, that, ha that like has the proper uh, licensing um, and then also the editing uh, when you get into like video there's a huge difference between some someone that just kind of threw their phantom around the neighborhood um, versus someone that took the time and learned how to edit and do the cuts and get the right shots uh, the right lighting uh, and you can really really tell when you look at the MLS it's like oh all right you hire the cheapest uh, you got some kid that's like out of college or something that you bought the thousand dollar drone and there he goes versus you hired a professional that had a background in lighting and in editing. Uh, so the same is, is true for photography. Mm -hmm. you, you, you started to talk a little bit about price. So one of the objections that our community hears is your competitors offer virtual tours for less. Yeah, and a lot of times they're not available. <laughs> <laughs> or they're not going to have the same turnaround time. Uh, so I always avoid uh, competing on price. You know, compete on value, not price. Are there other uh, uh, tips that you have for photographers uh, when speaking to real estate agents? Yes, a lot of it. I just would say, you know, what's the benefit to them? What are they going to gain by hiring you? Um, and then building that relationship. So... Uh, a lot of agents I know will always use the same photographer um, once they've got that business. And then they'll make the introductions to other people in their office as well, uh, which is huge. But I think getting your foot in the door, it can be very difficult uh, and, you know, figuring out what works and what doesn't work in marketing. As a real estate agent, I know that like everyone is always trying to sell me something uh, no different with when I was an author, and I'm sure it's no different for uh, the photographers themselves. I mean, I'm sure there's countless events that they could attend that may or may not actually do anything for them as far as sponsorship goes. And I'm sure you could spend unlimited money on Google AdWords, and that may or may not work for you. Uh, so really kind of what I, I tell any small business owner is to measure what you're doing in marketing. Uh, that way you kind of have a benchmark and then the next year, if you want to double your income or your double your sales, you, you know you can ramp up in that area and, and statistically it should grow at that same rate. Uh, so I just talked to so many business owners that just say, oh, I went to this event or I did this and they don't know the exact, they don't know the results. They just think, oh, well, my business has increased, therefore X, Y, Z must have worked. It's like, well, are you tracking anything? Uh, an easy thing to do, just like a promo code uh, that's different based on whatever the different lead source is. Or uh, we use vanity phone numbers, again, through call action. That way I know the person called me from Google or if they called me from Yelp, if they called me from Zillow, our website directly, so on and so forth, and signs. Um, that way when I'm reinvesting in marketing, 
I can say, okay, well, this actually worked. I can tie this dollar amount to these sales and the ROI is there. So let's keep doing that. Or in some cases I've realized, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes here. What are we doing spending money here? Uh, this was profitable before, but now it's not profitable anymore. Let's shift the funds around. And uh, I can also go back to like, uh, there's like print providers around here that are always trying to say uh, that their stuff is so great. I can say, well, you know, here's where we tested it and here's how many leads we got and here's how many sales we got. Uh, so no, it's not worth that amount. Here's what it's worth to me. Uh, can we work something out? <laughs> and then they either will or they won't. And you know, you don't, you don't feel quite as bad for saying no. You know, it's like, it's, it's just business. It's your, your marketing doesn't work for me. So why would I, why would I spend the money? Do, do you ever have times where you've, you've called your photographer, called, text, email to book your photographer and the house is sold before your photographer has actually showed up? Well, so we do our marketing, we schedule our marketing in advance before ever uh, marketing the property. So we wouldn't run into that instance. I have seen that before though, where someone half ass it at first, they're taking like a few photos from the camera and then they listed it and the property sells, which is fine. But again, it goes back to that they're not putting their best foot forward day one. And so I would argue to that person that they may have been able to get more offers or higher offers had they used professional photography. Um, it'd be like uh, you know, going to a job interview and having messy hair, um, having a stain on your shirt or something. It, sure, you might get the job, but you would do a heck of a lot better if you took the time you know, to do your hair, wear a suit and tie, and put your best foot forward. And so for us, we wanna make sure we're doing that every single time right away not after the fact. So you have one chance at making a first impression. For, for photographers, what, what is it that, that we should know about a real estate agent, about what motivates a real estate agent in, in, in order to help get the agent to buy photos, video, virtual tours, painted rocks, whatever it might be. What, <laughs> what, what matters to real estate agents? Yeah, unfortunately, real estate agents are extremely ego driven. Uh, it's just kind of a personality thing. They want to be the best. Um, and so, you know, painting the scenario in which uh, this tool um, allows them to one, get more business because they're always looking for more business, generate more leads, uh, what have you but also differentiate from the other people in their office because, you know, you go to any office, there's 20 other agents there. Uh, so what makes them special? And really focusing in on that uh, value proposition because uh, their number one concern, I think, is that they're missing, they're missing business. Um, I did some consulting for a company out of North Carolina called First. Uh, they're a data analytics company and they were running different ads on Facebook. And what their product does is predictive analytics allows you to see who's most likely to move. Uh, a product that had existed in the marketplace for quite a while, There's, they had plenty of competitors. Um, but what the key thing they were able to do was identify um, listings that the agents had missed. Uh, so using their database, they could say, okay, well, John Smith, actually listed their house and that agent wasn't aware of it. And so they were running ads around this idea of missed opportunities. And those ads got the most clicks and the most like demos and signups by far, like 10X. <laughs> uh, so it really plays into that agent's fear of missing out. Uh, so if you position this as a tool to get more listings, uh, then agents are gonna respond to that and say, Oh, the, wow, so, so and so got this extra business because they were using this tour uh, or this product, this service, and you didn't get it, or you know, and kind of keeping up with everyone else kind of scenario. Uh, to, it's to sad, up, but it works. Yeah, to follow up on that, do these three questions matter to a real estate agent? 
are you winning 100% of your listing presentations? Yeah, that, that's huge. Uh, so statistically, uh, the butter zone is like 90% or so. You know, you're never going to win 100%. And if you are, it's because you're not going on enough presentations and you're not doing enough business. Uh, but if you were ever like 80% or lower, you know, there is something wrong. Like there, it, whether it's uh, positioning yourself in the market, uh, price, uh, presentation skills, something like that. Uh, and what I tell agents that are experiencing that is like, it's a learning opportunity and be glad that you you could identify that and so you can focus in and, and do some more training around that area. Uh, but that is that is a very good uh, observation. So if you, if you can have a real estate agent tell you they're not winning 100% of the listings and virtual tours may be what it is the- That could be the missing piece. Uh, that that uh, would certainly move the needle and entice them enough to at least look at, uh, consider using it or claim to be using it. <laughs> I actually see that a lot, that agents will, in their marketing, say that they do uh, these uh, this type of marketing or other things. They'll say they do video and stuff. And it's like, well, I know for a fact you don't. <laughs> I can look at your other listings and, and you don't. But uh you know, at least then if they're telling the seller that, then they're now obligated to do so. Uh, if I ask a real estate agent, are your listings as big as you would like, meaning premium listings, meaning are you getting more 750000 to million dollar listings instead of 350000 to 500000 If I ask that question, are you getting as many, are you, are you getting, are you trading up to bigger listings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's huge. Um, agents are always trying to raise their average sales price because uh, there's three different ways you can make more money in real estate. One is to sell more volume. Uh, second is to charge more. And third, of course, is to uh, sell larger properties that sell for more. Uh, so that's actually the, the easiest way because uh, you're not having to sell anymore and you're not having to try to raise your price. Uh, so that's a huge value proposition for agents. And I think, uh, you know, telling them that, yeah, these tours are going to help you win higher price listings is a big benefit to them. Should, should every agent know what their closing Examples. rate is? What was that? Should every eight real estate agent know what percent of, of, of the listing presentations they're winning? Is, should that just... You know, the, the good ones do, but uh, the bad ones don't. Okay. Uh, but it could be that they recently lost one and uh, that's top fresh of mine and, and it would motivate them more heavily. You know, if I last week didn't get a listing, I'm probably thinking, what did I do wrong? And it's a lot easier to say, oh, oh I know what it was. I didn't offer a virtual tour than to say, oh, it was my pricing sucked. Uh, <laughs> I'm a terrible presenter or I don't connect with humans. Uh, so it's, it would be much better to be like, oh, okay, it wasn't, it's because I didn't have this tool. Oh yeah, that agent does have that. Okay, cool, I should start doing that too. Um, that, that would be good. Uh, you mentioned average sales price. Does, does, does every agent know what their average sales price is? Yeah, they should, they probably don't. Uh, if they have HomeSnap, it's a handy tool you can look and see in real time. Uh, which is fun to look at. And you can also look up other agents and kind of call it the bullshit detector. Uh, okay, so you should be able to ask the agent, or, is your average sale price as high as you would like it to be? Mm -hmm. And I would imagine- well, if they're already selling luxury homes, they're probably going to say, no, it's not as high. Everybody wants to sell bigger houses. So. But you, you really do want, you want an agent that's going to say, you know, would you like to have an, a higher, maybe a positive way to say it, would you like to have a higher average sales price? Yeah. Because yeah, I think uh, money, all three of those are great uh, leads, uh, sources, or like things to use in your advertising or in your conversations uh, that might you know, move them towards the sale. Uh, I would caution to just, you know, at some point, the agents either, they're going to do it or they're not. Uh, a lot of people will spend a lot of time wasting your time. And if you run into somebody that's, you know, trying to get a deal or whatever, just say no, move on. Um, <laughs> they're not a good customer. So, 
Okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Especially at conferences. You'll get, uh, if you have a booth, you might get some person that came along that sells like two houses a year and they're going to spend so much time. Like when I would sell books, at, uh, I'd speak on stage and then I'd have my books in the back and I'd get people that just drill me about everything about real estate and marketing, this and that. And it's like, it's in the book. You want to buy the book? <laughs> you know, like I'll give away a little bit here and there, but like at the end of the day, like I got to sell some product. <laughs> uh, so. Do you, do you um, uh, is, is it reasonable for a photographer to ask how many houses do you sell? How many listings do you do, you do a year? Yeah, I don't think that's uh, offensive at all. I think that kind of, helps gauge where they're at. Uh, it, you could follow it up and say you have a volume discount. If you prepay for 10 or 20, you'll get this deal or something. And then, they, you know, you're, it's a, a benefit to them. But I, I think where I was going, because you, you're talking about people who are perhaps not being efficient with your time and, and yeah. maybe somebody who's a new real estate agent may have a thousand and one questions for the photographer, <laughs> the photographer doing the education. But if the photographer asked the question up front, how many listings are you doing a year? That might help the photographer say, this is this is a good conversation to have, or oh gosh, uh, you know, they, they <laughs> sell two houses a year. Uh, this is a hobby business for them. This is not what- Yeah, and I wouldn't waste, I wouldn't waste too much time. Uh, yeah, so I guess it depends on the scenario. I, I think it's not inappropriate at all to ask. Uh, and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't take an agent out. I wouldn't be taking agents out to lunch if they're not producing agents. Uh, you know, I would really target those team leaders, um, the people that are, you can tell that they're doing a, a large volume of listings and, and you know, not currently using a similar provider. Uh, but if you're at a conference and they're lingering at your booth and you've got other people, then it might be a polite time to give them a brochure and let them move along. Or if there's no one around, you know, it's not always bad to have a couple people at your booth because it makes your booth look popular. <laughs> so just kind of actually talking after COVID. So because I yeah I know. yeah I mean if, by this fall we'll be back to doing uh, in person events. I'm okay, sure. we heard it here first. Uh, Brandon Doyle on the record for fall 2021 <laughs> worlds back to normal. Thank well, you. Well, I didn't say worlds back to normal. I said we'll have conferences. Uh, I'm on the planning committee for Minnesota. We're we're second, doing it. We're doing it this fall. So all right. Second, we're to state question, conference. second to last question for you. Uh, uh, when when things do return to normal, and gosh, I have so many questions. I, I, I'll limit it. To, I'll make it my third to last question. All when, right. When when conf, when when we are back to normal, and the the broker says, "Yes, I'd be delighted to have you come present to my agents." bring coffee, bring donuts, bring uh, money. Uh, sometimes money, you know, we, 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 we charge for that. Uh, do you want to comment on, is, is that worth doing or not worth doing? Yeah, I would do a little research into what their agents are using currently. Uh, if you have a brand ambassador that's in their office, then by all means, uh, do that because that person's going to, uh, you can bring them up and have them do a testimonial for you right on the spot. Um, if you can tie it in with some very short term discount, say now through the end of this week or end of next week, we're going to give you 10% off. Uh, that way you can quantify if people are actually um, doing it. But I think worst case you would do is come in and give a presentation, um, give away things of value, uh, food, what have you, pay the broker, uh, give out a discount code that's good forever, and then, you know, not really move the needle whatsoever. Um, so I would test the water first, you know, and depending on the price point, I guess, and how many agents they have and what's, <laughs> do their agents sell a lot? Because there are certainly, uh, there are certainly brands out there that collect agents. And we'll tell you, that, oh, we have 200 agents, but, you know, your average agent doesn't sell anything. <laughs> They're not a really big value. Uh, it, it could be worthwhile. I have represented a company in the past uh, uh, that was doing like drone photography. And one of the things I did was I went and spoke at, at offices. And I would say that it did move the needle, but it helped that I was an agent myself and uh, knew people in, in each office. So I could you know, use them as an example. Uh, and I did really quickly learn 
not to create a promo code that lasts forever because then it becomes the expectation that we just we as this age a group get 10 percent off as needs to be something like all right book now um within like two weeks or something reasonable and you get this discount uh limited time time offer uh, or your first tour you know not right. ongoing forever. <laughs> it occurred to me while we were talking, I was I was asking you as an agent, but I, I, I wonder from a, a broker's perspective, uh, is, 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 is the advantage of doing virtual tours from a brokerage standpoint is that it's going to help attract more tech savvy agents that want to work for a brokerage that's yeah, I mean, there there are brokers that uh, might have a camera themselves that they use, and they use that as like a way to incentivize their agents, or they might have a dedicated person. Uh, the I think the best example I can think of is in Chicago. Uh, there's a firm that that you just universally, if you're an agent there, you get a 360 tour for all your listings, and so uh, from their perspective, just kind of standardizing the quality of the listings that they put out there uh, in their service offerings across all of their agents. And I think certainly that helps with recruiting as well because that's one thing that they're taking off the agent's plate. Um, and there's probably some agents that are like, well, I wanna use this particular photographer, but it, it, it is what it is. I think mostly the decision is gonna come down to the, to the agent. And if a broker is bringing you in, it's either because they think it's really cool or they're just like trying to come up with more topics <laughs> if they're doing weekly meetings, uh, they've run out of title and mortgage and inspectors to, uh, to, to bring coffee and they just need someone uh, is entirely possible. Or in, in some circumstances, they have that affiliate relationship where they're, they're really looking for kickbacks. Um, and I would avoid that <laughs> unless they're exclusive. You know, if you're the exclusive vendor of that broker and they're funneling you a lot of business, then sure, maybe a small percentage would be appropriate, uh, but mostly yes, I would probably try to avoid time I heard that, I was just like, I fell over because they, they said, oh yes, uh, you can pick the Friday and it's gonna cost you $500 and you bring coffee and you bring food yeah. and you'll be on our preferred this, that, or the, I'm thinking, well, uh, they well how many other people? Pardon? <laughs> and the problem is how many other people are on that list? Uh, you know, I'm just thinking like, uh, okay, I mean, there's two ways to look at this is either, well, this is an, a revenue stream for the broker that has nothing to do with the agents they, they're supposed to be helping, or is the brokerage looking for uh, things that will help the agent succeed faster, that will help the brokerage succeed faster, yeah. as, as opposed to making yet another revenue stream someplace in this. Yeah, company. unfortunately, yeah, yeah. for certain companies, it's a revenue stream. <laughs> hmm. They are more notorious. I, I, want, I want to go back to just one question, one objection that, that I asked you earlier, and and you've answered me, and it was a perfect answer, but it, it the objection just comes up so much that I just want to ask it again, assume we haven't even discussed, and, and give me your full your full effort in answering the question. And just to kind of to, to tee it up, today, Thursday, February 18th, 2021, there are there are fewer houses than there are buyers. Mm -hmm. There's a shortage of supply. There's not enough listings. So when a house comes on the market, the objection the photographer hears, the house will sell anyway. Yes, it will. But not for, statistically, not for as much money. And you have to think about the reflection of your brand. So not only are you trying to get the most money possible for your seller who may refer you more business, but also you are creating a portfolio uh, that is advertising for you going forward indefinitely. Uh, it's a digital resume. And do you want your digital resume to say, I cheaped out and get, I am an agent that purchases shitty photos of my cell phone, or I am an agent that uses the best marketing possible to get the highest price possible and once the market shifts, you'll still have that to go back on. Thank you. Are there, are there, are there any questions that I haven't asked you during the show today about reasons real estate agents buy virtual tours that I should ask or that you wanted to share? 
Um, no. So I guess my advice for uh, the providers would be to really um, get involved in the association because uh, your, whatever your local association is, because that's where you're going to build relationships and you'll run into different opportunities. Um, and then find out who your raving fans are, whoever's ordering the most, uh, take care of those people and then ask them to introduce you to others uh, because that's where you're gonna get the best bang for your buck. Outside of that, I would just you know be really cognizant of where you're spending your money on marketing. Uh, make sure that you're tracking everything you do, whether it's Google ads or sponsorships or print, what have you. Uh, and so just to make sure that your marketing dollars are working for you and you're not just, you know, throwing money down the drain. Uh, and then the last piece of advice is absolutely do not compete on price, uh, compete on value, offer more, come up with a guarantee of some sort, whether it's, uh, you know, you'll re-edit the photos or uh, a turnaround time or an availability, find out what you can do, and then you're gonna become the person's go-to uh, provider. And I, as an agent, um, you know, I, in the beginning, had a camera myself, but I recognized the value of my time and the um, how it looks. So it looks, if I was to uh, win a listing for, let's say, a million dollars, and then I came out to the property, and it was me taking the photos, and it was me doing the 3D tour, and me measuring, that doesn't make me look professional. Uh, it looks a lot more professional when I say, okay, my stager is going to be here on this day. And then my photographer, who will also do the 3D tour at the same time, is going to be here on this day. Um, that is a much better use of my time. And it makes me look way more professional in the eyes of the seller. Uh, so really positioning uh, yourself as a provider, as that person and that value to that agent. There's always going to be the agent that's going to do it themselves and want the cheapest price. That's not the client you're looking for. Don't even waste your time on those people uh, because they clearly don't understand uh, the value of using a professional and the value of, of the system itself. That's the type of person that's gonna use it on their nice next listing or they might do it or they're kicking the tires and they're, they're just fit, like trying to get information about you because they're gonna go try to purchase a camera themselves or something like that. So just don't waste your time with them. <laughs> Uh, hopefully all that was helpful. Yeah, awesome. Just to follow up uh, on uh, asking for a referral, if, if you're, you're a photographer who you love and adore, mm -hmm. if your photographer came to you, <coughs> excuse me, and said, hey, Brandon, uh, I'd love doing business with you. Would you mind telling your, your, your friends or other, either, either in the... Um, uh, Remax results uh, brokerage in Maple Grove, Minnesota, uh, or yet other agents. Should that photographer incentivize you in any way? Should they be provide? You know, if that turns into business. Yeah, I, yeah, I've known ones in the past that have kind of created an affiliate program, and I think that's great. You know, uh, the person's probably going to use that link the first time. And you might get credit for the first one, uh, but it's not realistic to think that this is like an indefinite referral stream for that agent. I mean, that's not their job. Uh, but if you're doing a well, good enough job, that the agent should be willing to do some introductions. Uh, the other way you could position it is I happen to be in the area or pop into their office and say, oh, hey, would you mind like introducing me to so and so? Like you can pick, pick out some producers that you know are in the office. Uh, that they might know and say, hey, would you mind introducing me to Aaron down the hall? Uh, I know he sells quite a few homes and isn't utilizing uh, digital showings at all. I, I, would you be willing to do that? And they're going to say yes. Uh, and that's going to be a much easier uh, setup than, than just, you know, cold calling. So, uh, but should, could you incentivize? Yeah. Or, you know, just the random, hey, thanks for that intro here's $20 off or here's something. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to go as far as the affiliate program itself. I think when you get into that, it kind of, uh, I don't know. It, I think it makes it a little less personal, you know, because now you're, you're looking at it as a revenue stream. Just acknowledged a thank you, but yeah. sent a, a, a surprise, yeah. a light gift of some sort to say, yeah, hey, I, I think that's that introduction. 
that's certainly more appropriate. And the more specific you're able to get with your ask, the better. You know, can you introduce me to any agents is a very vague ask. Whereas if can you introduce me to John down the hall, I am going to be in your area this date. Uh, that, that's a much, you're going to get a lot but, uh, better results that way. Okay. Awesome. Uh, you know, I, we, we started out the show seven, re, uh, seven reasons real estate agents buy virtual tours. I, I, I think by the time we get done transcribing the show and counting the number of reasons, we might have to go back and, and edit the show to say a, a thousand and one reasons real estate agents uh, <laughs> uh, buy virtual tours. So th this has just been awesome. Brandon, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we've been visiting with realtor Brandon Doyle. Brandon is team leader at Doyle Real Estate Team with Remax Results in Maple Grove, Minnesota, and uh, uh, just uh, and and also a board of directors uh, member of Minnesota Realtors. Uh, for Brandon in Minnesota, and I'm Dan in Georgia. Thanks for joining us for for watching WGAN TV live at five.